May 2007, not that long ago, I'm this homebound mom in suburban Boston with two kids under two. I was a little internet savvy, but not very, because I asked my then husband, Web 2.0, where do I upgrade my browser so I can see that? <laughs> and you know, I've had a good six years. Uh, Seth Godin was kind enough to throw me in one of his books, didn't know until it came out. Uh, I picked one of the loudest mouths in technology to be the first person I convinced that Twitter had some business value, and so Guy Kawasaki, in turn, evangelized me. Uh, I come by the evangelist title from having watched him for years. I am one of, unfortunately, and this will change in 10 years, unfortunately, very, very, very few women in the world who started a company, raised VC, and had an exit. Uh, believe me, it wasn't as shiny as it looked. That was 140. Um, and, you know, don't believe the hype. People like to to play that kind of stuff up. The thing that I think is really, really important for you to think about is that you're comparing your insides to anyone else's outsides. So I'm gonna try and stay on topic on the social media topic, because I know that's what you really wanna hear, but I'm also gonna move through these slides as quickly as humanly possible, because I wanna get to your questions, because I don't know if you're more interested in talking about social media or just talking about the experience of being a female entrepreneur. I'm open to either. So this is me now. I work for HubSpot. I love them. I'm having a great time there. How the heck did all that craziness happen and compressed to such a small time period? In short, Twitter in particular, and you'll see a lot of my examples are very Twitter heavy, but social media in general, social software, I had this theory was gonna change the world. I ran out to start this Twitter-based social media app store called 140. Social software did change the world. And of course, Karen Carpenter fans in the audience already see where I'm going with that. We're really just getting started here. Right? <laughs> By the way, I'm gonna take this moment to say, I, I tend to leave a lot of my slides up there to just do their thing. You know, if you're visually impaired or whatever, or haven't, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not reading them all. The slides are all available right now already. I tweeted this out and the event tweeted this out. Slideshare.net slash pistachio. Because I am gonna speed up here and start going really, really fast. And I don't want you to feel like, what the heck? I didn't even get to see anything yet. So, Marketing seems to have thought for 50 years that people wake up primed to see their advertising, right? Which they, of course, don't. So why do marketers wake up and say, let's make an ad, right? How does that make any, any kind of sense? Your customers are out there on social. They're relying on social. They're on social all the freaking time. One out of every eight moments online is spent on Facebook, right? Customer attention back then, right, was you got some direct mail, you saw some ads on TV, there was that classified section in the newspaper. Anybody seen one of those in the last 10 years? They're there. They still do them. It's weird. Uh, and telephone, right? The reality now is it's, it's spread all over the map. It's, you know, Lauren was up here. It's Google. It's all the different social networks. It's all mediated by social relationships. And the mindset itself needs to shift. This is Jim Stengel, who was a former global marketing officer for P&G, right? So if P&G has figured this out, how come so many other businesses haven't? It's about building relationships. It's about attracting the right kind of people for your business, the right kind of customers. You no longer have to win the world, right? You need to win your niche. You need to win the kind of people who are the right fit for your business. And to do that, you have to solve for the humans, for the unique humans that you are trying to attract, and your advertising, your social media marketing, your promotions should not only solve for them in terms of making them happy, but they should also help them succeed. And this is hopefully something that HubSpot, although you can tell me at the end, if, that HubSpot tries to walk the walk on, we call it drinking your own champagne, and really do all our marketing by giving away free and useful stuff. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today in the context of your businesses. What can you put out there that solves for that human being you're trying to attract, not only making them happier and giving them what they want, but actually making them be more successful? In the words of one of my favorite 
female keynoters, if you ever get to see Kathy Sierra speak, please drop everything and go. You want to make your users kick ass. You want to make your customers very, very successful because they're your customers. So I've divided this up into a few different sections. Um, kind of a big picture, some of my philosophies on social media, what makes it really effective. Then I'm going to go into some tactics. I'm going to show you precisely how we drink our own champagne, including a little peek at this crowd assembled here. Um, towards the end, a little bit about how to make this about you and some vision for the future stuff. <laughs> 